All righty. I think we are live, Heather. Um, hey, guys. Hello, hello. If you are here with us live, please let us know. Give us a hashtag live. Or if you're happening to catch the replay, give us a little hashtag replay. Um, so I wanted to put something together. Um, obviously, everyone's world has basically been turned upside down over the last few days, last few weeks. And um, a lot, I'm seeing a lot of mamas that are completely and totally stressed out over this whole online learning. Um, mm -hmm. it, you know, it, and, and so I wanted to grab Heather. Heather is a sweet friend of mine and um, she actually has 22 years. See, she doesn't look it, does she? She has 22 <laughs> years of homeschooling experience. But um, what I want to mention, first of all, is we know that there is a complete homeschooling is completely different than this online learning that we are now all being thrown into. So I want to let you guys know we understand there is a complete difference between online learning, what we're all doing right now. Basically, you know, we're going to crisis mode, crisis school mm -hmm. versus homeschool. So I just want to let you guys know that we do know that there's a difference there. And also, um, I want to kind of start out with some of these messages from some teacher friends of mine. Um, so I reached out to several teacher friends of mine today and I said, OK, so I'm going to do a live interview tonight um, with a friend that has been a homeschool teacher for forever. We're going to share some golden nuggets. We're going to um, speak some encouragement into these mamas at home that have now been thrown into this. Um, I myself, um, if you don't know, I have twin third graders. Um, I have a seventh grade boy and then my daughter's in college. So she's got it. Seventh graders got it. But even just starting the last few days um, with my twin third graders has definitely been interesting. Um, so I'm going to just kind of read some things that they said. I, I love this. Um, one of them, this is from Paige Lombard. She said, give grace. Um, things that we have in common are we are all uncertain and the commonality of we are doing what is best for us and your kids. It is a new normal that is bringing great changes. Time with family opportunities to reconnect on different levels, learning new technologies that will help with things from years to come, grounding with what is truly important and finding gratitude in the things that we do have. We have the means to keep life and education moving. Many of their teachers are mothers too that have the same worries. So it also gives us an outlook as we move into these online learning days, gratitude and grace. I love that. I love that so much. Um, another one I want to share before we get started is she said it would uh, basically her response to what would you tell them? And she said it would be to take a deep breath and relax, take a few moments to yourself and do what you can to help your kiddos. But do not stress over what you can't. We are all in this together. So ask for help when you need it. And that is the one thing, Heather, I will tell you, um, you know, we've had um, a lot of communication with our kids teachers um, got a message today from our elementary school counselor or junior high counselor checking in on Gunner and it was easy to me um, you know lots of communication and you know that's one thing that we've already seen is we're all in this together there's not a gotcha I don't think we're going to deal with that stuff um, you know so Heather go ahead introduce yourself and um, tell everybody a little bit about you and your kiddos I'm Heather. I live in Texas, Aubrey, Texas. And um, first of all, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna throw this out there. I mean, my hat goes out to you, mamas, right now. Every one of y'all. Um, I can't imagine what you're going through. Um, I know I've homeschooled for 20 something years, but here's the deal: I had several years to research what I was getting myself into. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, curriculum, I researched it. I really, you know, I had to get with Scott and say, all right, are you in this with me? Because this homeschool thing is going to be hard. Um, you gals, my gosh, I mean, it was literally just thrown at you, like no notice whatsoever. It's like spring break and then bam, it's here. Oh my gosh, what are we doing? And these public school moms, you know, I've got one that taught my son, Zachary, when he was in kinder. Um, she's got four kids, you know, one that's graduating this year. So the fact that she's home now 
having to communicate with her 20 something students, parents and homeschool her children. I, I mean, wow, you, you guys are rock stars. Whatever you do is going to be amazing. So I agree with Maria. There is grace. Take a deep breath. Um, it's, it's going to be fine. Um, mine are 27, 22, uh, 18. I actually have a senior this year, so he's not going to, as of now, have a graduation. So that's kind of something we're dealing with. And then I've got these two littles, a 10-year-old and a 7-year-old. Um, so, you know, I can honestly say that my 27 and 22 year old, um, they're fine. Yeah. <laughs> they were homeschooled all the way through and the flaws in their education. I mean, we had them, you know, I had a baby one year and, you know, that was a crazy year. Um, they don't remember the flaws. They remember the amazing times we had together. They remember the fun stuff we did. Um, so Jess, just just relax. It's gonna be fine, y'all. Are we're all in this together? And um, but yeah, so yeah, it's it's been a journey. It's actually been thrown at me too. Not so bad like you guys because I kind of knew what I had. You know, I already had my curriculum set up. But um, just now I work, and now my husband is home twenty four seven. So <laughs> having to juggle all that's been a change as well. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of the intro of who I am and what I'm doing here. <laughs> I love it. And so I wanted to, a couple of other notes, I wanted to kind of go back and forth and I want your feedback on this. Um, so um, one of them said, I know it's new and a little crazy, but everyone um, can totally calm down. The teachers are going to work with the kids and nothing is life or death. And I think that that's so important um, that we that we realize. And I'll be honest, there was a moment like last, I actually posted on Facebook. I'm like, wait a second. Like I'm seeing all these mamas going into like homeschool mode. I'm like, wait, I don't teach. I don't teach the kids, right? Like, this is not my responsibility, right? The teachers teach. I just make sure they do their work. And really, yes. that is the message that I'm getting from a lot of teachers. They're like, hey, we got this. Um, and, and anything that now you may be the mom that you want to do this. And there is nothing wrong with that. Like, I mean, if you whatever environment you create for your kiddo is great. But um, I love that, Heather, you and I talked about this because unless your your kids are being brought home to home to do school now online, and then indefinitely do homeschool, um, mm -hmm. things are just gonna be different. And I, I love the fact that, Heather, you talked about that home is home mm -hmm. and yes. school is school. So elaborate a little bit on that. Yes, like um, some of the things that, you know, one of the, one of the big things that uh, I did when I first started homeschooling is I had to create, you know, a classroom with desk, you know, lined up and, American flag over here. I tried to bring the school home. <laughs> that that didn't work so well, you know. <laughs> when Drake comes downstairs in his PJs, you know, and he didn't want to get dressed that morning. I mean, my world fell apart that first week that I decided to homeschool. So we ditched that. And um, you know, I still have it, my school desk or whatever, they don't get used much. But you know, like today, Zachary, he's my kinesthetic kid. He is, you know very active. Um, I have to put like a PVC pipe under the floor so he can roll it with his leg. So he'll focus on his math. You know, he's just always busy, busy. So I, I, I love the freedom that we have. And you guys have that as well. Take a break. If math is just not clicking, something's just not, something, we're stuck here and you need to email the teacher or, you know, call a friend get that boy out on the trampoline, get that kiddo out to get some of that energy out and then get him back in where he can focus. Mm -hmm. Um, my, my home is the classroom. I mean, we were baking bread yesterday, you know, Abby's cracking the eggs and she's counting the eggs and we're making math out of how many, how much, how many cups of grain do we have to put in the grinder? You know, just, um, using opportunities. You know, we have a lot of laundry now that everybody's home and I had to do laundry the other day. Abby had to match socks, you know, so I, you, ha you have to think outside the box. Sometimes you can go let them do that worksheet where they match socks on a worksheet, or you can have them do a chore and match those socks right there. And it's, if you have a kinesthetic child that needs to be moving, that's a great opportunity to let them do that. Mm -hmm. um, 
look for those moments. Um, that That's huge for us. Um, I love that. And one of the things, and I, I wish that I had um, saved that, but I, I saw a, a flyer kind of floating around on Facebook talking about um, the amount of actual instructional time. And that was very revealing to me. You know, I think a lot of people go into this thinking um, they need six hours of learning. And no, 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 no. You know, um, for, for us, I think for my third graders, it was an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. um, two hours, something like that. And um, I'm so glad that I saw that right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. um, but talk to us a little bit about that. You know, I know you said with the breaks and if they start getting frustrated, you know, how movement mm -hmm. is, is an important piece to the puzzle. Um, you know, we all need a reset. I mean, think about us. Yes. We get frustrated with something. If we're just sitting there dwelling mm -hmm. versus, okay, take a breather. Mm -hmm. Let's come back. Yes. The difference it makes. And, and one of the wonderful things now about everybody being home is, um, you know, you have your older kids when you need a reset. I mean, Travis, it's his senior year. He's locked back there in his room on the computer all day doing his studies. You know, I, I could not get a concept across to Zachary and I was, I was done. I'm like, I, he's not getting this multiplication fact. Travis, come here. You know, he comes in. Will you spend five minutes with him, please, on this? You know, and Travis gets it. He's in, you know, doing algebra, whatever, geometry. So he sits down. Utilize your kids. Utilize your husband. Um, utilize everybody when mama's hitting burnout. Um, definitely your school should really only take, I mean, with your elementary kids, if you are really trying to pile it in in the morning, I like to try to get done with everything by lunch so we can go do PE and music and fun stuff in the afternoon. I like to get the focus, the math, the English, you know, um, science I actually do in the afternoon. But um, if I'm really trying to get it all done and we're having a great day, it should only take about an hour and a half to two hours. Mm -hmm. It's not all day. And there in the mm -hmm. beginning, I did think school was all day. I mean, we have our little schedules here, mm -hmm. you know, and everybody has these hanging on the wall. And I mean, you can't see, but Yes, they're great to have a schedule for mama, you know, just to know, okay, are we on track? This is what we're doing at this time. This is what we're doing. But and it also gives them something to check off because these kids like to check things off. But guys, don't, don't, don't beat yourself up. That's it's not the law. Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. No. Yeah. It's just there. And flexibility, to... just as the teachers yes. have flexibility in their teaching day, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes things happen and they, they adjust. Um, one of the things that was said a couple of times is um, that, you know, not to get stressed out over um, technology because technology may fail. Mm -hmm. And that is totally okay. Um, who was it that said, um, oh, where did it go? Um, but basically they were talking about, um, you know, don't, don't, don't panic. Oh, here we go. Um, take it day by day, step by step, and don't panic when technology does not go your way. Um, because there's a hundred percent chance that it won't. So we'll do something that goes wrong, right? Do what you can and just let your teacher know what's going on. So Wi-Fi goes down or something happens with the computer or you can't get something to load. Um, it, it, she said, we are here to help. Last, pray, 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 and enjoy this extra time you are given to be with your child. Um, at last, anything you do um, with, and last, anything you do with your child is amazing. Just try to have fun. Um, and that's from Valerie Tanner. I thought that was oh, so sweet. Yeah. You know, she's like, hey, we're in the same, she's in the same boat. She's a teacher and a mama. So she's, she's doing both things. I mean, all of the messages that I got were just so encouraging one of them said hey we're, we're still on the clock like there's yep. nothing wrong don't feel bad if you have to reach out to them our teachers actually have um specified like conference times where they can video conference with the kids they are available via email um i don't know uh how you guys are getting your i mean obviously all school districts do it so differently we're in a smaller school district but what our teachers did is the the lessons will be posted on monday uh, this week we didn't have school on Monday, so they were posted on Tuesday. But the lessons will be posted, all the work, so the to do. So it's kind of like Heather's schedule that she just outlined right there. Our kids, when they log in, there's a to do, and then mm. they know what they have for the week. I know what they have for the week, and as a matter of fact, I'm actually logged into Google Classroom on for both of them, so I can actually from my computer see 
what they still have to do and what they've done. Now, funny thing about them um, is they actually were excited to get started. Um, I know not all kids are, um, but I let them pick which assignment they did first. Um, and, you know, on, I guess it was on Tuesday, Creed had done one of his math lessons and he wanted to go on to the next one. And then the next one, he kind of started getting frustrated. I'm like, hey, bud, you don't have to do that today anyway. Um, and he had been sitting there for quite a while. I'm like, it's okay. You can get up and do something else or you can go play. Um, mm -hmm. And so what they've done is they actually, they had a reading where um, it sent them over to a reading website. And it's so funny. One of them read, I think it was Creed Red 7 and Cross Red 9 or vice versa. Creed Red 9 and Cross Red 9. But like they're, they were actually enjoying it. So like I wasn't micromanaging. I was just letting them like kind of do their thing. Now that's me as a mom though. Yeah. All of us have our own mama vibe, guys. And mm -hmm. so what works for me isn't necessarily what's going to be gold for you. I mean, we've just got to still do what works with us. But I think the biggest message I wanted to get out is don't stress. Don't worry. Be flexible. Um, the teachers are for us. They're they're in the same situation, um, but they really got a, a lot harder because we're trying to get the messages, you know, the, the instruction out to our kiddos online, and then they're now working with their own children and. Um, exactly. And we know that they, they'd rather be teaching ours than their own. You know, that's, that's kind of part of it. It's, it's a lot easier to learn from someone else other than mama, right? It's true. Um, but um, I, yeah, I love that. Um, talk to us a little bit. Um, I don't know. I know you had some things to, that you thought were important to share. I know you've had a lot of moms reach out to you and been like, how do you do this? You know, how, yes. how do you do this? So, yeah. Um, one of the things I love is, you know, just over the past week, just seeing flooded, flooded, flooded on Facebook, you know, families together, you know, siblings playing together, you know, um, I don't know about y'all, but uh, my kids have a big age gap. And um, one of my older boys has been on quarantine, so he has not seen his siblings he texted me today, four more days. I get to come see you on four more days. And I said, good, you can help your brother with math. You know, yeah. I mean, it's it, that bond that you guys are going to see in this season is, is incredible. I know you don't feel it right now. I mean, when I first started homeschooling, it was crazy. Everybody was fighting all day long. I mean, we were just trying to figure out our new norm. But you're going to see something beautiful um, transpire here next week or the week after. It, you're going to see your kids playing together. You know, that older boy that didn't can stand his sister. You're going to see them starting to get creative. I mean, it's just a beautiful thing. One thing that we like to do, and um, we love to have dinner as a family at the kitchen table. Life happens. We're busy. We're in co-ops. We do homeschool, but we homeschool a lot outside of the home. We, we're in different clubs and you know, their speech and debate, all kinds of different things. So we're running around just like you guys are grabbing Taco Bell or not Taco Bell, but whatever we can get our hands on before baseball practice. Mm -hmm. um, but guess what? That's not here. We're having to cook and sit at the kitchen table. So one of the things that um, Scott is doing is, um, is, is starting to read. Uh, we've read them before, but the Little House series. Because um, yeah. we feel like we're living in Little House on the Prairie days, you know. <laughs> Heather, we haven't gone that far back. <laughs> no, it feels that way because I live in the country. So it's like, huh? When you go into town, will you make sure you get bread and toilet paper? You know, I mean, <laughs> like, I mean, it's fun. The kids today out in the yard, they were playing Little House on the Prairie because we're mm -hmm. reading. We're taking advantage of that. You know, the boxcar mm -hmm. children. There's some great books you can do at mealtime together. They bring up conversation and they can see that, you know, learning can be fun and, mm -hmm. you know, they can play and have fun with their learning and create mm -hmm. things. And we do like in the afternoons, it's been beautiful in Texas. Those afternoons, take advantage of that. Get those kids outdoors and let them go explore. You know, Zachary found a spider web the other day and he took pictures of it and magnifying glass and, you know, went and drew it in his sketchbook. You ha take advantage of those moments. There's so much learning and that creativity, mm -hmm. um, even though it doesn't go along with their science for the day. It's it's it when they're elementary, you can get by with that a little bit. Let them explore and let them learn um, things. Think outside the box is kind of what I go back to. But reading together, having that meal time together um, has been incredible for us because they're home right now. Guys, can you imagine everything that's going on in this country? 
you know, that sweet teacher that's got 20 kids in the class, her having to carry that burden of answering all these tough questions. They need to be home right now. They need to be under you. They need to be cuddling with mommy at night when you say prayers with them. And um, you need to be pouring into them and telling them they don't have to worry. You know, God's in control. And that this is such a beautiful time that they will look back on. And it's going to be some of the most wonderful memories. They're not going to remember mom flipped out, went in her room and cried today. You know, <laughs> they're not going to remember those things. Um, they're going to remember the beautiful times that they had together. You know, um, we got chickens today. You know, we spent the day out on the coop. I know it's some of y'all don't live on a farm, but you can still go on the internet and look up some fun things and explore. You know, you're getting a little window into seeing your child's future. Um, these elementary ages are so important. Um, you can see what they're interested in and maybe what they might end up being when they're older. You know, we used to go to the library back when we didn't have internet, when I first started homeschooling and I would go in there and I'd tell the kids, okay, pick what section of the library you want to hang out in. And we're going to get five books from that section. You know, Nicholas would go over to the flight. He was interested in air, you know, flight and all that. Drake was interested in magic tricks. He wanted to do magic tricks. You know, you get to kind of see with them home now what they're strong in, what they're really creative in. And you get that little window to um, to be a part of that. You have a huge, you know, and I, I told a mama today, she was stressed out. She goes, I, I cannot do this one more week, you know. And I told her, I said, you know what? When this is said and done, he may tell you you are his favorite teacher. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, oh, God, don't tell okay, me that. No. I mean, you just never know. But make, I, I, something I'm doing with my kids right now that's kind of fun, just to make it fun about coronavirus because they're hearing about it everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing a time capsule. We're putting stuff in there. We're putting, you know, the paper towel roll. <laughs> You know, just things that have to do with this season of life. And we're going to bury it in the backyard and we're going to dig it up in 10 years. Mm -hmm. And we're going to open that up as a family and we're going to remember this season. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be amazing. Um, it's going to be incredible. It's going to be a time that our family became stronger together. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's, you know, just, just think about it that way. Think about um, everything you're pouring into them now in the end they're going to get back on track. And I guess, Mari, I'll read this little thing. My sweet teacher friend. Well, hold on. Me, wait a minute. I do want to um, mention just for a minute, because as she's saying all these things, um, I love it. But I, I do want to address that it's not going to be perfect. You're not going to have a perfect day. The odds are the more kids that you have, there's like, there's, is there even a perfect hour? <laughs> I mean, my kid Cross just got upset with the domino game that Jaden like begged him to sit down and play. I mean, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like they're gonna be over it. Um, what you're, they're, you're, they're gonna have some tears. I mean, there's gonna be something that they're asked to do with school that they can't do, or maybe they're struggling. So I just, I want you guys to know, like, we're not coming on here acting like, like the family's just perfect. And um, one thing that I've had to, um, you know, I've got this banner going on right now with family time, but I've also had to understand everybody's going to do their own thing. You know, Jaden is going to be in her room and she's going to do her thing. And heck, her whole world was just flipped upside down as a college athlete, as a college student. I mean, everything in her life is not as she expected. I'm not expecting her to be all up in our family grill right now. You know what I mean? Like she needs her space. Gunner, go do your thing. Creating Cross, go do your thing. I mean, there's going to, I mean, yeah, they're going to play some video games. I mean, usually what I say is, all right, get outside. Like, let's go. Like, get outside. You know, you've had your time. But, um, you know, they can still do that, you know. Um, so I, I don't want anybody going like, oh, my family's crazy and the kids are fighting. I mean, we, we have that almost daily. Like, somebody's mad at somebody because, I mean, I'm dealing with three, three boys, three alpha males. They are three... <laughs> Alpha male in the Dillard household, and then poor Jaden is like, "Why am I living here right now? And why can't I go see my friends? And why am I not running an outdoor track meet yeah. right now? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's it's, yeah. it's crazy. Ralph is like, "Oh my gosh, what have I what have I done? I'm not home with these people all the time." He ordered chickens today. We have they're now raising chickens. I don't know. It's new here, um, but. It, it's gonna be okay. Like it's yeah. it's gonna be okay. Um, 
there, there are a couple of, oh, I, a couple of things from the teachers I want to share before we close it out and you share yours. Um, because I thought this was really good. Um, this is from a sweet teacher. She's like, girl, I get it. It's been difficult with my husband um, working from home too. So see, that's another thing, y'all. All of us are at home. And mm -hmm. most of us, everybody's working. So like, I'm still working. <laughs> I'm taking care of the Longhorns and now chickens. <laughs> um, but everybody's online, you know. Um, you, you may have some kids sharing the same computer. I mean, this is an adjustment for all of us. Um, but she said, I feel your pain and it breaks my heart. We as teachers, we want to be with your kids so bad. Um, mm -hmm. Trying to work and help our own kids is tough, but we are here to help. I would try to break up some of the work throughout the day in short sessions to ensure them that their attention stays focused. You got to remember when they're at school, they are not having mm -hmm. like just all this time of instruction. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, they they they're allowed. They get up. They go. They go to art. They go to music. They're they're at PE. They're going to lunch. They you know what? they have all those things. Most of those things require movement. And just with my speech right. background, my therapy background, I'm gonna say we need some movement. Okay. They've yeah. got to have some movement. Um, it just helps them so much. Um, try to get them outside and engage in activities um, and make it for them and ourselves the easier it would be. Um, how we project ourselves often has an influence of on how well of an activity or the assignment will be received by our kiddos. So I, the worst thing we can do, y'all, is log in and see the assignments and be like, oh, my God, how are we going to do this? Like, mm -hmm. this is where we, we've we got to go, okay, I've got this. And one of my biggest pieces of advice I think my friend gave me, that she, um, she has older kiddos, and um, one of the big, best pieces of advice that she gave me um, when my oldest hit her teenage years is she's like, whatever they tell you, don't freak out. Just don't freak out. <laughs> you freak out. You can go in your room and freak out. But whatever you do, do not let them see you freak yes. out. Because then they're yeah. not going to tell you. You know, whatever we do, we try not to let them see you yeah. freak out when it comes to school. You know, right. stay calm because I'm telling you. I, I mean, I have all of these notes from these teachers that are going, guys, it's going to be okay. Everyone everyone not just across the country guys but across the globe we're in the same boat and we're in this together and where there are gaps we're going to figure it out and, and they're going to bridge that gap um if we can pump them up about it and make it seem fun they're much more inclined to do it and to do it well we'll all get through this things could be so much worse than getting to be home right now with our families Y'all, I mean, that is something that absolutely breaks my heart. And I have so many friends that are nurses. I have a good friend that's a nurse that just sent her kids away because they, they're, with, they're with family during this time because she knows she can't go to work and be exposed and then come home to her babies. Y'all, how fortunate are we to be able to do this? And I know it's, it's, it's hard and there's nothing easy about it, but I want you to look back and think of all the hard parts of parenthood that you have survived. You know, I look back and go, wait, I trained two, potty trained two boys <laughs> at the same time. You know, I nursed two babies at the same time. You know what I mean? Like, you are so strong. You've, you've, yeah. you've dealt with difficult before and you can do it again. Um, one of the things that several of them, though, did say, um, breathe, take a hot shower, find time to be alone and be still. Um, know that on the other side of this, God will prevail. And then the hope we will gain in humanity and our neighbors will be worth every mom, mom, mom. And yes. I'm yes. so um, it, lastly, she said, um, love your kids through this. Um, if it's too much or not enough, communicate with the teachers. But please this is what she said. She said, when you're communicating with these teachers, please do it with kindness and grace. We are all just figuring this out as we go. Mm -hmm. We want to help. We want everyone to come out on the other side with their mental health in check. So, you know, the, the biggest thing that I've learned through this, Heather, is that, you know, we're all in this together. Um, we need mm -hmm. grace. And I love that before we got on here, you were talking about there's just going to be days that don't go right. But this is where we thank God that his mercies are new each day. <laughs> and right. we can go to bed and we can start right over fresh yes. the next day. So don't be hard on yourself. Give yourself some grace. Um, 
hopefully as you have you as you've watched this you have a little bit of a sense of relief and please 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 share this share this with somebody that you know um that that needs this somebody that's really struggling right now um are there any last minute before you share um what your teacher gave you heather um for a mama that their kiddo is already really struggling this week what would you say to that mama um love on that kiddo um spend some time with that kiddo um he's who knows what else is going on in his little mind you know that's affecting everything um you know i've got a little kid one one kid he's grown now but he just would make things harder than they ever were and um you know i was thankful that i was able to um pour into him and love on him and teach him the way he needed to learn because he, he was one of my kids that had to do one subject and then nothing else for a while. I mean, he just did math and then we waited till after lunch and we just did science and we waited, but it took me like a year to figure that out about him. Love on that kiddo that's struggling. Talk to him. He, he obviously needs to talk um, and, and share what's going on in his little heart um, and just um, give him grace too. Uh, give him grace. Give yourself grace. You don't know, so, you know, his way of the way he needs to be taught is differently. So figure out what that is. How does it work for him? It may be going out on the porch swing. You know, that kid that I had, I had, he liked one on one. And I, my other kids had no problem with me setting everybody down at the kitchen table and juggling. He wanted one on one, which worked out well for me because I could just do math with him, you know, mm -hmm. later on after babies were down for a nap or whatever. But just, just um, there's going to be gaps in education. I mean, I think everybody needs to know that uh, there were gaps and there's a lot of gaps in the homeschool education. But I, my kids can they won't tell you, but I will tell you there were gaps in our education. But I have to remember back when I was in elementary and high school, how many times did we have this much left of a book that we never finished? You know, you, you make up the next year. You make up later and um, it's fine. There's going to be gaps in their education. I can tell you though, with a 27 and a 22 year old, they don't come back to me and say, mom, you forgot to tell me, you know, they're, they're not going to do that. Um, they're going to learn and pick up those things as they need it. Um, today, Scott got one of the kids in the office while he was paying a bill. He's like, they need to learn this. This is a life skill. You know, um, Travis is 18. He needs to know that we pay the car insurance now. Get in here. We're going to show you how to do this. You know, that's a life skill. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to add on that, that what you said, mamas need time. And uh, yeah, I mean, even as homeschool moms, we call that burnout. Like I could do a whole hour long thing on burnout because homeschool moms hit burnout a lot. And um, that what you said, Maria, take a shower. Um, one of the biggest things when I know I'm hitting burnout is I try to get up an hour earlier than everybody else. And you guys have your own little devotion. I have one that I read every morning. Um, just try to get that first hour before I start hearing the pitter patter and coming down the stairs, you know, and everybody wanting breakfast. Get that hour to yourself. You know, um, I told Scott one night this week, I want them to make me a candlelight outside by myself at the picnic table and I'm eating dinner by myself <laughs> <laughs> with a glass of wine. Yeah, uh, you know, and, and I'll tell you what, it's super important, y'all, to stay connected right now. Um, this is great what Mari is doing. We it makes us not feel alone, you know. It's we're a community here. Call that friend when you're hitting burnout. Call that mama that you know is gonna listen to you cry and whatever, but then she's gonna tell you, put your big girl pants on and let's get back out there and help you get some tools to get back out there and face the facts because those yeah. kids are still waiting there. But you know mm -hmm. what? There's some days I'm like, you know what, guys, put up the school. Come on, let's go do something else. And we, we we just put it up. There are some days that are that way. Actually, the day that the president was on a whole lot one day, that's when we said, forget it. Everybody's done with school for the day. We're going to get back on this tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's OK. That's the beauty of now homeschooling. You mm -hmm. can put it away. You just got to get back on it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, so but keep your Keep your fuel, keep your tank full. Call a friend. Yeah. You, you yeah. can't pour from an empty cup. And you learn there that. You so mama, you gotta take care. You gotta take care of you too. Yep. Yep. So you want me to end with my little thing that my sweet sure. Time, that was so sweet. 
Well, yeah. I also want to say that um, we are all equipped and God gave us these precious blessings, you guys. He gave them to us. He handpicked them for your, you, your rearing and your bringing up. Um, get to know your kids during this season. God's entrusted them to you. Um, this is going to be, it's going to be something we look back on it, and it's going to actually be a beautiful thing. I know you can't see that right now. But it will, looking back, uh, one of my public school moms that um, taught Zachary his first grade year, she's actually a stay-at-home mama with her new baby, and um, she said this, don't worry about them regressing in school. Every single kid is in this same boat, and they will all be okay. When we're back in the classroom, we will all course correct and meet them where they are. Teachers are experts at this. <laughs> don't pick fights with your kids because they don't want to do math. That keeps coming up today, I think, because I needed to hear that. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't scream at your kids for not following that darn schedule. Don't mandate two hours of learning time if they are resisting it. If I can leave you with one thing, it's this. At the end of all of this, your kids' mental health will be more important than the academic skills. And how they felt during this time will stay with them long after the memory of what they did during those four or more weeks is long gone. So just keep that in mind. Don't sweat the small stuff. You, we have a net, like I've dreamed of having a lot of moms that homeschool. This is like, for me, so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> got lots of mamas that are that are that I, that can relate to my stress I feel every day. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, and and last but not least, like you're not alone. And um, you know, I would know one of the biggest things that we face as moms before this ever came into our life is that mom fell. And y'all, that is the enemy. That that is yes. We have to let that go. Like. Don't do the mom shaming. Don't do any. No, like, like she said, we are equipped. Here's the bottom line is we are going to fail and we're going to make mistakes. But man, um, you know, that's where I talk to my kids and I'm like, dude, I'm not, I'm not perfect. Like I'm not perfect. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm be, this is why, this is why I need Jesus too, honey. <laughs> like, this is, you know, I mean, it's, it's okay. And I think at the end of the day, it can be a learning experience for the entire family, you know, yes. um, in so much more than just math and, and, uh, Math. <laughs> measure a shoe by the gallon or what? Uh, the, our kids were doing measurements with math, and Ralph's like, Is your water bottle a gallon? You know, I have that huge. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's so I mean, it's it's crazy. Um, but you know what? We're we're gonna make it, and um, and we're gonna do it together. That's the that that's the one thing. We're all how many times have I said it? We're yeah. all in this together. Um, so lean on someone else's strength, um, but don't compare yourself to the mom that you think has it all together. I promise you, we we all bring to the table different strengths and different weaknesses, right? Um, so whatever you do in this journey, do not compare yourself. Um, don't compare your kids to somebody else's kids because you really don't really know all that's going on anyway. Um, and uh, try to have some fun with this and shout out to our teachers. teachers. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we love them. We are so thankful yes. for them. Um, you know, I've always seen the teacher side of things because I worked in the schools for six years as a speech therapist. Like my classroom yeah. was right next to them and I worked with them. And so uh, Ralph was a teacher and a coach for several years um, when we first met. So we have that that side of the you know, background. We have that bit of understanding. But I just felt like it was a good thing just to get on here and um, share some light with you guys, some hope, some encouragement. That was basically what Heather and I wanted to do with you guys. So if you've got a friend that's struggling, please um, tag them over here on the video. It should go to my wall and stay there for quite some time. I streamed it over to my YouTube channel as well. Um, but, um, you know, tag tag them and um, we, we want to share this with them. And um, I have not been able to actually see questions during the live. So if there were some questions that you guys asked that we did not get to, um, we will try to get on that. And I may even have some teachers your friends and um, help you guys answer some questions too. So with that, let's wrap it up. Thank you, Heather. So, Thank so much. Thank you. We're All right. Get All right. Girls. Oh, we got it. <laughs> All right. See you later. Bye guys.